So I realized in one of the last videos on this channel, I missed acknowledging something that I felt was really important. So as soon as the fuel truck arrives, this will be a Steph apologizes for missing something important, but also a let's go flying in Echo Yankee Zulu video. My avionics here are in litres still, and I'm working on gallons, so I have to quickly work out 3.8342. And then what I've done is I've got my flight plan. I'm going to a place called Warrnambool today. I can just go send to, go flight plan, go activate, and on here is my flight plan. Also, the other cool thing, look, if you zoom right in here, I've got safe taxi, Garmin safe taxi loaded on here, so I've got all the runway diagrams. Uh, just let air traffic control, well, the tower here, actually, let the tower and Marabin know what we're doing. Actually, it's ground, it's not the tower at all. Marabin ground, Echo, Yankee, Zulu is IFR4, Warnable, one POV taxiing via run-ups. Echo, Yankee, Zulu, ground report run-ups complete. Echo, Yankee, Zulu. Echo, Yankee, Zulu, traffic upwind, Cessna departing on the upwind leg, clear for takeoff. Flip take off, Echo Yankee Zulu. Full power, hill flow is good. Temperatures and pressures are in the green. Echo Yankee Zulu, Rapid Tower, join downwind, runway 17 right. 500 feet, right turn. 1000 to go until we get to 2500. Echo Yankee Zulu, number one. Echo Yankee Zulu. Urban Centre, Echo Yankee Zulu, departing Marrow Rabin, passing 2500, climbing 4000. Echo Yankee Zulu identified, snow wire 5 traffic. Echo Yankee Zulu through 3,000, change the altitude to 4,000. I really like that chime telling me that I've got 1,000 feet to go to my new altitude. Okay, Yankee Zulu, uh, you're on with clearance uh, across the Class Echo airspace, uh, tracking overhead Avalon planned route, maintain 4,000. I uh, cleared through the Class Echo, uh, tracking overhead Avalon planned route, 4,000 feet, Yankee Zulu. So when I'm leaning, what I'm looking at here is this is the uh, cylinder, so the exhaust gas temperature I look for the first peak and then I enrich the mixture, so I, I make it hot and then I put fuel back in to cool it down. I cool it down 75 degrees, that gives me a fuel flow, we're pretty low down, so it's going to be a high fuel flow. A true air speed of 166 knots, got a bit of a headwind as you can see, so the ground speed's a little bit lower here. I know some of you may not find the fuel chat in an aircraft interesting, but I know some of you will, so if you did, uh, if you did, no more fuel chat. Very nice to be flying again. Here's a new milkshake. The thing I wanted to apologise about, the thing that I kind of overlooked in one of the last videos, was that I mentioned that I'm now a Garmin ambassador. And I think I made almost a bit of a joke about that, which I, I kind of regret a little bit. So I wanted to do two things. First of all, I want to just reassert how important this is to me and how proud I am to actually be called a Garmin ambassador. Now you may know other YouTube aviators who are also Garmin ambassadors, people like Flight Shops, there's the Patey Brothers, Citation Max. There's a good list actually of other aviators who are Garmin ambassadors. And to be honest, I feel, I honestly feel a little bit out of place. It's so humbling for me to be in a group of aviators who I've watched, I'm fans of on YouTube as well. And to know that I'm an ambassador alongside them means a lot to me. So I didn't want to play that down in the last video. So to Garmin, thank you for including me. But the second thing I missed, and more importantly than that, is you. The reason why a company like Garmin and I can talk to each other is because you support what I do. You're so the fact you interact with me on the channel, the fact that you are a part of a community that has grown to the size that it has, has meant that a company like Garmin is willing to talk to me. But yes, I'm babbling on. Bottom line, I want to say thank you for supporting me in my journeys, for watching these videos. It's because of that that we get access to this kind of uh, equipment and avionics on the channel. Thank you to Garmin, but most importantly, thank you to you. Also, there is, of course, a, an official agreement in place between me and Garmin. So even though I'm a customer and I genuinely like their products and technology, just expect on this channel for me to start telling you a little bit more often that I really like Garmin's products and technology. Okay, out of the clouds. This is brilliant. It's so nice to get out of Melbourne and actually, actually go somewhere today. I think I'm comfortable with my layout now. This is kind of the, my, my cruise layout where I've got all my uh, airspeed indications, altitude, basically my primary flying instruments here on the left. And I like having my flight plan up here. Yes, I know I've got my flight plan on here as well, but I actually like having it up here so I can see things like distances. I actually want to change some of these fields, to be honest. 
edit data fields. I want, instead of cumulative distance, I want that to be estimated time of arrival, that's it. And that really helps with things like planning my uh, top of descent, which today is no issue because I'm currently at 4,000 feet and the instrument approach starts at 3,300, so no real issues about descending. But if I was up in uh, like 10,000, 12,000 feet, I can work backwards in sort of 500 feet per minute steps and work out my descent rate. Might sound complicated, but it's really not. Having the time there for when I'm going to hit each waypoint is really good for that planning, but also good with giving position reports for air traffic control as well. If you haven't watched my channel, or if you're a new subscriber to the channel, you might not know who Milkshake is. To those of you who know Milkshake, this will be insulting to tell you this. Milkshake is a gift to me from my daughter, so when I go on my long trips, it's my little reminder of my family and that they're travelling with me, so Milkshake keeps me company on these long legs. If you have watched the channel for a while, do you remember the first time Milkshake appeared on the channel? Because it was a leg almost exactly the same as this one. It was flying out of Melbourne when I did my first circumnavigation of Australia. If you are new to the channel and that's not enough reason to subscribe, I have no idea what is. I want to practice the RNAV, even though we could fly visually into Warrnambool today, but I want to practice it. And I always do the RNAV from the south. But we've actually got winds from the south today as well. So I'm going to go in by this waypoint, Warrnambool Whiskey Golf. The minimum descent altitude, 650. I love that, and that appears up here now on the uh, altimeter as well. Plus I'll get a call out when I'm reaching minimums as well. It's so, so good to have that on the new G500. Told you I'd talk about the avionics. Audible traffic, Cirrus Echo Yankee Zulu is uh, one zero miles to the northwest, 3,300 inbound, will be a straight in approach for runway 13, estimate circuit time 37, audible traffic. Well said, Echo Yankee Zulu is visual, audible, cancel silage. Yankee Zulu, audible silage, turn right, okay. See ya. Audible traffic, Echo Yankee Zulu, three mile final, straight in approach, uh, runway 13, full stop, audible. All right, flight down to the runway, eyes to the end of the runway. And we'll come off on taxiway Charlie. Got to do a little bit of maintenance whilst we're stopped here at Warnable. Not really uh, aircraft maintenance, just YouTube maintenance. The GoPro, for some reason, has run out of batteries. I'm just charging it up now. I thoroughly recommend getting one of these. This is not sponsored, but this is an anchor power bank. It will charge this GoPro. It will take a little while, probably take about an hour and a half, but I can charge it here. So if I'm gonna go and get something to eat or drink at the, uh, then you can just leave this charging and this will be powered up for the flight home. It's brilliant. And it only takes about an hour and a half to charge it fully when I'm at home. So it's, it's like a really important part of my flying kit now. Just bumped into Jess. Jess, say hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. What are you flying? Papa Warrior today. Second nav today, second nav solo. Second nav solo. Yeah. Gonna fly for the airlines? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Who's your favourite airline? Yeah. I've seen quite a bit of stuff on Qantas. Yeah, Qantas yeah. have not got a good name not at the moment. Name we, at the moment. we love you Qantas, and please give Jess <laughs> yeah. a job in the future Qantas, he'd love to fly I'd love for a you, job, but... thanks. <laughs> All right, nice to meet you Jess. Have a good Thank flight. You. Thank you, you mate. Take care. Audible traffic, Echo Yankee Zulu is rolling runway 13, crosswind departure to the east, climbing 5000 IFR. Audible traffic. Echo okay, Yankee Zulu with the IFR departure from Audible. Echo okay, Yankee Zulu, code 3770. Fast 3770, okay, actually departed Warnable time 29, we're tracking London. Uh, just like to request a vented 4000 non standard. The Yankees all identified, no for fast traffic, commended 4000, QNH 1022. Copy the traffic, 4000 and 1022, okay, actually. The reason why I've got 4000, I said non standard 4000, is because as you can see, we're heading kind of in a easterly, well, northeasterly direction, and when you're going easterly, your IFR levels should be an odd number, so we should be 5,000, which is what I actually filed. However, if you look out the front window, what you can see is we're right on the cloud base. Now that's okay, we can go into the clouds obviously, but if you look down here, you can see that the outside air temperature is one degree. And therein lies the potential for icing. Now I could obviously go higher, but this isn't a particularly long leg, so I don't want to go too high and try and go right over the top. I asked for non-standard 4,000. He told me there's no other traffic like coming on this airway the opposite direction to me. If all else fails, my lowest safe altitude for this leg is actually 2,700. So if we do pick up ice, I can descend down to 2,700. And if absolutely everything fails, it's fairly visual around us as well. So I could also cancel IFR, just get completely out of the clouds. When it comes to icing, probably second only to thunderstorms, when it comes to icing, that's the thing that, that scares me the most. Don't like it. I can get t-shirts with that, or maybe I can sell merch. I don't like icing. Unless it's on cakes. A quick shout out here to Synthetic Vision. Just see above the, where it says GPS. See that tiny little hill? That tiny little hill that's here? Look. It's that tiny little hill that's in the distance. 
I've never had synthetic vision on my aircraft before, that's brilliant. If ever I need to look out for tiny little hills, now I know where to look. Yankee Yankee Zulu, just for our planning, just uh, confirming a visual approach via Bay West from Robin. Hey, for Yankee Yankee Zulu. Echo Yankee Zulu, just standing out at 4,000. Yankee Zulu, continue direct to the field, report crossing the coast. Continue the field, we'll go, Echo Yankee Zulu. We are looking for traffic, Echo Yankee Zulu, and just about across the coast now. Yankee Zulu, thanks. Traffic, 11 o'clock. Echo Yankee Zulu, clear to land. Clear to land, Echo Yankee Zulu. EYZ safely in the hangar for the next video on the channel. I think I want some experience flying outside of Australia. I think it would be good for me as a pilot to learn a bit more about flying in international airspace. What do you reckon? Good idea? Yeah, I think that's a great idea.